Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Togoff, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about the scapular retraction test. The scapular retraction test is not so much a diagnostic test as it is a special test that allows you to determine a probable course of treatment for someone with a confirmed or highly suspected rotator cuff tear. Now, before we get into all the theory of this test, because there is a little bit to unpack here, let's actually go over how you perform the test. So, to perform the scapular retraction test, the patient will be positioned either in standing or sitting. And you're essentially just gonna perform the traditional empty can test. We cover that test in a separate video. And recall that it's used in the diagnosis of a supraspinatus tear. So, the scapular retraction test, the first part of it is just the empty can test. Okay. So as a reminder, here's the empty can test. So again, the patient's arm position is named for the position your hand would be in when you empty a can of soda, thumb facing down. So in other words, the shoulder here is internally rotated and the forearm is maximally pronated. Okay, And the arm is held out in the scapular plane. So it's not directly in front of you, it's out a little bit, approximately 30 degrees. Okay. So here's the empty can test. The patient holds that position against PT manual resistance. Okay? Now, if somebody had a rotator cuff tear, we wouldn't expect what we just saw in that video. What we would expect is that that arm would start to drop. There's gonna be some weakness. Okay? Pay very close attention to that weakness. And in fact, if you have a handheld dynamometer, you should take an actual pound or kilogram strength value for that test position. Because we're gonna repeat the empty can test with a little modification. So the next thing that's gonna happen is the PT is gonna wrap their fingers around the top of the patient's clavicle and use their hand and forearm to fixate the patient's scapula in position. What does that look like? Well, it looks like this. So here's just the fixation, okay? So you're gonna come behind, wrap your fingers around the patient's clavicle and use your hand and forearm to fix that scapula in position. And in addition to holding it in position, you're also providing a little posterior tilt of that scapula. That's often one of the movements of the scapula that's deficient in a lot of people, particularly with shoulder problems and rotator cuff tears. Now, from here, as you're fixating the scapula, you're gonna repeat the empty can test. Okay? So here's what that looks like. So I'm already got my fingers wrapped around her clavicle, fixating her scapula from behind, and we're gonna repeat the empty can test. So she resists my manual resistance, okay? So really, the scapular retraction test is just two empty can tests where the second one, you're fixating that scapula against the thoracic wall. Now, note that if the patient lacks range of motion to get into that position, because we're at 90 degrees, right? We're in the scapular plane, but 90 degrees. So if the patient doesn't have the range to get into that position, you can literally just look at scapular, or excuse me, scaption active range of motion. Okay, as your measure instead of strength in this position. Note though that the test was designed to utilize the empty can test. So when you do the empty can test on a patient with an actual rotator cuff tear, that affected side, it's not gonna be able to resist very much in most people. It's gonna be weak, it might also reproduce some pain. It's not gonna be as strong as the unaffected side. Now, once you've kind of assessed the strength of the affected side with the empty can test, then you're gonna go in, fixate the patient's scapula as we showed, and perform the scapular retraction test, which is basically just fixating the scapula and repeating that empty can test. Now, when you repeat it, one of two things is gonna happen, okay? Either nothing, you're gonna feel about the same level of give, basically it's just as weak as it was without fixating the patient's scapula, or, when you repeat the test, it's a little bit stronger. It might still be painful, but the strength actually improves compared to when you are not fixating the scapula. What does that mean? Well, let's take the case where fixating the scapula does nothing. It's still weak. That implies that the primary issue with the patient's pathology is they need a stronger rotator cuff. Okay, so that treatment, although you should do some scapular retraction based exercises, should primarily focus on strengthening the rotator cuff. Okay, now let's suppose you have a case where you again fixate the patient's scapula, repeat the empty can test, and it's a little bit stronger. Okay, 
That implies that when you fixate the patient's scapula, that helps. So their treatment course should be more of scapular retraction based exercise. Not to say you can't strengthen the rotator cuff a little bit, but you should focus a little more on those scapular retraction and stabilization exercises. So bottom line, the scapular retraction test is not a diagnostic test. Okay? Empty can test is part of your diagnosis of a rotator cuff tear. The scapular retraction test really just helps guide you on what the primary focus should be in the beginning stages of that person's rehab. Should it be rotator cuff strengthening or scapular retraction slash stabilization? Okay. So hopefully this video gave you a good intuition on the scapular retraction test, why you would use it and how to perform it and how to interpret the results. Join us in the next videos where we continue to talk about more special tests pertaining to the shoulder. Thank you.